Kia ora, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode of The Drop Clutch with me, Ricky V. In this series, I'm interviewing as many drummers from around New Zealand as I can get to uh, in order to find out what makes these guys and girls tick. Now, tonight's episode, not tonight's guest, is a BMF from the way back in the day. He's a super dope drummer. He's a fucking... Uh, event promoter of one of the most prestigious events in the country. He's the uh, grind master behind uh, Corpse Feast and Horrendous Disfigurement. And he's also the event organizer for the Napier Death Metal Festival. I have the one, the only, Roger Nicholson. Roger, how we doing, bro? Brutal hells, Ricky. Fucking brutal hells to you, bro. So to get us started, Rog, um, tell us about uh, yourself and the bands that you're in. Um, give us a bit of a rundown. Mm, all right. Okay. So I'm Rod. I am um, drum for Corpse Feast and Horrendous Disfigurement. Um, Corpse Feast started all, all the way back in 1994 and it's sort of based off all those bands back in that era. Uh, early suffocation, cannibal corpse, obituary, that sort of era before the um, early albums that they had. Um, horrendous disfigurement, that was sort of based around the early 2000 era with bands like The Crypt of Birth, The Scourge, um, Deeds of Flesh, Gorgasm, that sort of stuff. Their early albums. Sure. And um, those are the two bands that I drum for. Yeah, short and sweet. Fucking sure to do that, bro. Uh, so, uh, tell us, Rog, what got you started drumming? How long have you been start? How long have you been drumming? And uh, what got you started? All right. So, funny thing is, Cold Cease actually started with me on guitar, oh, and um, uh, that sort of didn't work out. So we um, swapped things around, and I ended up being on the drums. And then it sort of it sort of worked out, so it, it, it just stuck, and um, <laughs> we've been uh, that way ever since. Um, the drumming part sort of uh, it was like, oh well, I'm a drummer now, so I've got to buy a drum kit, sort of thing. And um, trying to learn what those drummers were playing back then, like you know Mike Smith and uh, Craig Smolowski and all that. Um, it was just insanely hard, bro. Like, holy shit, double bass was like, what the fuck, double bass? I can barely <laughs> do it with one foot, man. Um, but um, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, being young back in those days, had a lot of energy for it. And uh, it was uh, really cool to sort of you know, jam and sort of end up being a part of uh, the New Zealand you know, heavy metal scene, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, her, her, horrendous disfigurement sort of started okay. as a as a result of uh, Corpse Feast finishing, oh, one of its many finishing, and uh, <laughs> because of that, it was uh, all right. So I'd try and start something else that was sort of different uh, than uh, Corpse Feast style, um, and that sort of became what horrendous disfigurement was based on that early era, like I was saying, 2000 era, um, just just straightforward, brutal death, blast beats, you know, heavy riffs, guttural vocals, just insane tempos, just from start to finish. And and that's what Horrendous Disfigurement became. Sure. Um, uh, oddly enough, I wrote that stuff on guitar and with uh, – uh, Guitar Pro 5, which had sort of like a fake drummer sort of thing in it, where you could write program drums in order to write a song just to get the layout of it. Oh. And uh, it was just sitting there for five years before um, Mark Pollock, the guitarist, um, moved from Auckland to Napier. And uh, this ain't no lie. He walked. He as soon as he moved to Napier, he walked into the to the first pub 
he, he saw with the sole intention of walking up to the first metalhead to ask him if he could jam. That <laughs> metalhead was Adam McFarlane, who was oh, the vocalist yeah. of both bands. And um, Adam just sent it up, sending me a text saying, hey, this dude wants to jam some suffocation and, and that. And um, I was like a little hesitant at first because um, living in Hastings, you don't get those sort of texts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we, got, we got around to it and um, one thing led to another and horrendous the segment became um, like a, a real live playing band. Sure. And, uh, yeah, both bands are still happening to be going to this day. Fuck yeah. Uh, you mentioned trying to learn what – those old school drummers were done. Now, uh, uh, you and I are both uh, old enough to remember days pre YouTube, whereas a lot of the guys that I've interviewed and and a lot of the people watching this uh, won't be. So, can you tell us what it was like trying to learn this shit without having the wonderful tool that is YouTube at your disposal? All oh, right. The only thing you could do back then was actually go and learn it for real. I go to drum school if you're like a religious drummer or have someone that you know that knows that shit. Otherwise, it's just old school as learn it by ear, just thrash the shit out of your tapes. We all had tapes and CDs back in the day because that's all there was. Yeah. And um, that's, that's, that's all I did, man, just thrash the tapes and just play as close as you could to it. It wasn't until like um, – like the early onset of the internet and that where um, you got to figure out how these drummers were doing their shit. And it, and it sort of made it easier. Nowadays, there's so many techniques. It's, it's you don't know what, what drummers are, are using to, to play what they play, you know, which is what it is. It's all cool. But, um, yeah, <laughs> it was hard back in the day. It was hard, <laughs> especially on the feet. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Cool. Well, uh, uh, I have a feeling that you've probably already mentioned them, but who are some of your favourite drummers, Rog? And who do you think, uh, whose style do you think has influenced your playing the most? If you can name some drummers. Um, well, definitely in the old school era, that, that would have to be like uh, Dave Lombardo, Nick Menza, Mike Smith, you know, the early drummers of the you know, early 90s, you know, late 80s, early 90s. But then, you know, fast forward to the 2000s, and you had drummers like Tim Young, Mike Hamilton, you know, Tony Loreno, and they're just, just blasting the shit out of their drum kit. It's like total madness. And... um that's the era that just got me. It's just like the crip at birth and time begins. You know, Tim Young, yeah. just start to finish, just full on madness. And oh, it's yeah. just like, holy shit, these guys can play like that. And, uh, and um, that sort of, you know, it, it was a, a, a driving force, you know, to be a drummer like that. Because sure. you know, as a drummer, uh, I don't really consider myself a drummer. I, I'm just the one. Who, I'm just the guy who's playing the drums in the band. It's like, <laughs> oh shit! I got to buy all the drum gears and learn how to do these fucking fast double bass techniques and hammer on snares. <laughs> sure. You know, I, I like doing it, but it, it was like, all right, okay, yep, double kick pedal. Which one do I get? You know. <laughs> yeah. And um, th like that sort of era. Going off your question was like um. How do we how do we know which double kick pedals to buy? And because I like Dave Lombardo in that back then, boom, Tama double kick pedals. Sure. Got them. Didn't know which ones to get though, but got them. You know, and they uh, they've seen better days. They're like icons now, parked up. But uh, <laughs> you know, they, they they proved their worth and did their use. Sure. But nowadays, with uh, I'm sure you know. Steve Bernstein, his pedals, you know, oh, those sort of these days. Some pretty cool choices out there now. Fuck yeah. And uh, like that back in the e day. E easier ways to, to learn these these new uh, tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, you have had the, the pleasure, had the luck of being able to open for some really amazing international bands um, and seeing – fucking tons of drummers over the last 
however many years. Uh, mm. Can you tell us who your favourite drummer is that you've seen live, please? Live. Oh, uh, one one in particular would have to be um, Richard Hoke from Brutal Truth. They played in the 90s and, um, like, the era in the 90s, you know, when, you, when you've when been listening to Metallica and Megadeth and Slayer and they've got the huge drum kit with the double bass, all the toms, the cymbals, and it's just like, fuck, yeah. Well, they turned up in Wellington with the smallest drum kit ever and we rocked them. We were like, that can't be the drum kit. That must be the, the opener band's drum kit. It was fucking their drum kit. Just a shitty old four piece. And um he just jumped on that thing and obliterated the shit out of it. Like oh, holy fuck, it had me in total awe. So uh live would have to be that one. Yeah. More recently, but um oh, I'd say two thousand uh one was uh Jimmy DeGrasso. He he was in negative when they came over and um well, it's it's me, Def, but um, he played, you know, and fuck, he was awesome, man. Just just live, um, so oh, clean, so clean. Jade Sim Simonetto, yeah. um, Hades Eternal, just just blast beats for days, but just just seeing it, just fuck, it just holy shit, it just <laughs> keeps you going, makes you go home and have band practice and just try and go, oh, what the fuck, you know. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Uh, it's uh <laughs> i want to go back you mentioned tim young i feel like that guy's so underrated eh? like people just he you know when they talk about drummers of that level he just seems to get left out and it's it's something that's always confused me because as you said he's insane absolutely yeah. fucking insane and he just doesn't get as much love as he should so this is the time for it fuck yeah uh yeah, so the oh. <laughs> uh, so moving on to a little bit more specific to you and your drumming and your bands um can you tell us what the writing process is now for horrendous disfigurement <laughs> holy shit oh the straight up answer for that is there has been no writing process <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, not for a while uh it's just more more being like playing sort of things Okay. Keeping these uh, Napier death fest events, you know, sure. carrying on sort of thing. But um, uh, there's, there's um, drive there to, to get new music happening sort of thing. But uh, that, that, that's going to happen. That's going to take a bit of time, bro. Sure. Before anything will eventuate from that. S yeah. Same sort of same sort of deal with Corpse Feast, you know. Sure. Well, what's it like getting to play in a band with your brother? Not a lot of guys, not a lot of people get that chance, man. So that must be fucking cool. It's the best thing, bro. It's just choice. You know, it's choice enough playing with your bandmates anyway. Sure. But when one of them is your brother, I'm sure Steve Bernstein and his bro can account for that, you know. Hey. It, it just is. <laughs> At the <laughs> one, we'll be playing in the band together. But yeah. we started courting together, me and the bro. Oh, that, sure. That, the band, yeah, oh. and uh, yeah, so he was the original vocalist, man. I was okay. the guitarist, our cousin was the drummer, didn't work out, so we swapped around. I jumped on drums, Claude jumped on Gat, Cassie jumped on vocals, and then it, that, that stuck. And then we've been through like numerous, you know, rebirths, if you will, <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, getting on to your drumming specifically, um, obviously you're a, you know, long time drummer, you've, you've done, your, you've done your hard yards. Um, but is there a specific technique that you are practicing or working on at the moment? Um, to be honest, no, um, <laughs> I'm just, uh, straightforward, brutal death metal drummer, just bomb blasts. From start to finish, you know it's it's hard as fuck. Some don't, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. But you know, when you get it, you feel fucking awesome. When you don't, it just you know you just you put in the work so you get it the next time, sort of thing. <laughs> um, 
just straightforward hammer blasts, you know, and uh, Corpse Feast is more old school with the old uh, skank beat, you know, yep. the old, um, uh, what's it, the technical, was it the technical blast beat, you know, which I call it the grind beat, which is the, just the skank beat played really fast, you know, yeah. napalm death, you know, that sort of stuff, or the um, single foot blasts, which is just stand foot together, uh, yeah, but, um, Horrendous is more of the double bass blast, hammer blast, bomb blast, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, just it's just more. I wouldn't say speed, just more whatever tempo it is, just that from start to finish. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, sweet as sure. <laughs> Cool. Uh, so now we move on to a game I call first, last, at best, and worst. Now, the fact that you've been on it for so long might make it a little bit hard, but uh, this is where you tell us the first show that you ever played, the very first show that you ever played, what the last gig that you had was, uh, the best show that you ever had, whether that was uh, the best environment, the best band that you played with, the best that you played, whatever that is, uh, and then the worst show that you've ever played whether that was again the environment um whether that was uh you know maybe you played badly maybe something funny happened we'll go get into that in a minute but let's start with the first show that you ever played first show geez i'm guessing that would be corpse feast we played a 21st in newtown at the back of wellington somewhere oh, i can't remember uh whose birthday it was Bro, Claude knows. He knows the details. Yeah. But um, we played with um, Afterbirth, Burnt Offerings, Natus, and and it was yeah our first gig. Uh, we were drunk as it was um, as expected for a first gig. You know, terrible. But um, <laughs> it was first gig. Um, personally, myself, I just cared that we played. You know, like oh. Oh, we got a chance to play, we played. Yay! I don't give a shit if we sucked or feel awesome. That, <laughs> that that actually still doesn't matter to me to this day. I I play because I want to play. Not, yeah, it's funny, but it works. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. Fuck yeah, Afterbirth, man! Old school Wellington metal band. Fuck it, fuck yeah, Afterbirth. Need uh, another bunch of bubbles for you, bro. The Nuku Brothers. Sure. Afterbirth. Fuck yeah. Uh, what was the last show that you played, Rog? Oh, jeez. Well, that would have to be the Napier Death Metal Fest. Fuck number yeah. 13. 13. Still going strong. Tell us about them, man. 13 events that you uh, put on? That's fucking it insane. Was, uh, it was a uh, good couple of nights, man. Uh, it was, um, I guess... Uh, uh, become a thing that that's a thing. I don't know, man. It was just <laughs> voice metal and everyone's into it. And um there's just it just keeps seems to be it just seems to keep steamrolling. So sure. let it go and next one roll the next one up. <laughs> sure. Uh well can you tell us about the best show that you've ever played? Oh, geez. I think that one hasn't happened yet, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I think it's about to. So I'm, I might actually have to have a practice for that one. Oh, <laughs> sure. That's the, uh, the, you guys got booked for the suffocation tour coming up, didn't you? Uh, Corpse Feast? Well, yes. Uh, well, I'll take the time out to thank Val once again. Ben, every, ben, everyone knows he let Corpse Feast open up the Wellington slot for suffocation. So, um, which inadvertently means we get to open up the New Zealand tour run for suffocation. I thought I'd throw that in there for personal <laughs> love. <laughs> but jeez, I'm fucking grateful. And I uh, think that'll have to be right up there with one of the top. But uh, if not, it's going to be. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah. Ben, man, he hates it when I say this, but Ben's the fucking MVP of New Zealand metal, man. Since he came <laughs> on, uh, it was I think it was 11 or 12 years ago that he brought um, Ben Medusa, now Valhalla. The work that that guy has put in, the bands that he's brought over, like legit MVP, for sure. Dude, 
Yeah. Like not just these big bangs that we all love, but all the little things that keep going in between. Mm. They just won't stop, man. And uh, waste fests and things like that. You know, just all these bands. It's just just nonstop. It's really good to see. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, cool. And then what is the worst show that you've ever played? So as I said, that can be uh, the worst environment. That can be you played the worst. That can be something funny that happened. Tell us about it, Rog. Um, okay. So not a geek, but uh, a concert. But uh, oddly enough, one of the best nights of my life, which turned into the worst night of my life. Oh, so geez. it was, <laughs> oddly enough, suffocation when they played for the first time in New Zealand. When uh, Frank Mullins and Mike Smith, Guy Chase was in the band. Um, fuck, as it turned out, dude, I had an asthma attack after the concert and I fucking passed away in the ambulance for a fucking, like, a minute and a half. And the, fucking, uh, the ambulance dude had to do the the CPR. manual fucking thingy, keep me going till they got me to the hospital and brought me back, and I was in a coma for, like, 16 hours after it. So Holy I tell fuck. myself, I suffocated at suffocation. So <laughs> um, if I was going to go, that was going to be the way, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> So, Brutal Hells. Fucking Brutal Hells. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck. Oh, my yeah, God, bro. Here, bro. Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, was it the asthma attack that, like... Oh, it was everything, dude. It was everything. I mean, we were having spots of suffocation after the gig, man. I know that didn't help, but, dude, <laughs> I was having spots of suffocation, man. Come on. Fuck it. Uh, you know, there was no turning that down. But, uh, <laughs> no. I nearly paid the price, but I didn't, so... Fucking brutal. <laughs> Cheer to that. Yeah. Holy shit. Wow. That, uh, it's not a competition, but that one, that one's right up there with uh, one of the best. <laughs> Ooh, worst, worst show stories. Fucking hell. Cool. All right. Yeah. So, Brother Roger, uh, this is the last part of the show, bro. This is where you get to make any plugs to any uh, people out there that you want to make a plug. Uh, sorry, uh, plug for anything that you've got coming up, you know, whatever to do with the bands. Um, obviously, we've just done it, but please do it again. And any shout-outs to any people out there that you want to make a shout-out to. Roger, sir, the floor is yours. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so April 25th, Corp Seas gets Ooh. open for suffocation at Valhalla. Uh, yes. <laughs> but I thought I'd tell you just to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, there will be a couple of gigs coming up yet to be announced. But uh, for now, that's it. And um, of course, there'll be a, a, a other Napier Death Fest. Details for that to come very soon. Brutal Hales. Brutal Hales. And any shout outs to anybody that you want to make, bro? Oh, geez, just to everyone involved in the New Zealand metal scene, keep it going, keep it alive, keep it hungry, you know. And um, anyone that wants to play at the Napier Death Metal Fest, just send me a um, private message on Facebook and take it from there. Fucking chat of that, bro. Sh short and sweet. Alrighty. <laughs> Fucking Roger. Brutal hails to you, bro. Thank you so much for being on my show. Brutal hails, rookie. Awesome, okay. brother. Oh, chair. Awesome. And thank you so much for watching. This has been The Drop Clutch with me, Ricky V. This is episode 13. Holy fuck. 13. i uh, got some big ones coming up, so keep an eye out for that. We'll see you next time.